got things like that in our life uh, that we're really passionate about, and we seek those things out, and we spend a lot of time. And, you know, as, as funny as it is to me to see these kids running around to grab eggs, sometimes I think about the things that I spent my time doing and seeking out uh, when I should have been seeking out Jesus. And I think about what a waste and how goofy that must have looked to everybody else. At the time, man, it just seemed like it was so serious. You know, this is the most important thing in my life, and I've got to be the absolute best at it, or I've got to go and be this for this person, or I'm missing out. And now at 30, I look back and go, man, I would have so laughed in my face. If I could go back now, you know, I know that Brad Paisley wrote a song about if I could write a letter to me, talking about if he could write back to his, himself as a teenager. And I don't know that I would write a letter, I would just go back and laugh. Because somebody's got to be entertained by some of the dumb things that I did and the focus that I had. But I'm reminded, and, and you know, as a preacher, uh, I love Easter. Because it's one of those days that even like people who don't even care anything about church, don't care about Jesus, they even talk about Jesus. And it may not be in a positive light, but they're at least talking about it. You know, that somewhat the focus is on Jesus. And I just think about people that I see that, that go to church. They might not go to church all year round, but they go on that Sunday for some reason. I guess because it's, you know, Easter or whatever. And it always kind of intrigued me that they would go this, this day. You know, that they believed enough that Jesus came back from the dead, but they don't believe enough to be dedicated to him year round. And it always intrigued me to that. But I always enjoy it because it means that somebody that usually probably isn't focusing on Jesus is. And usually that person that I see, they seem real happy that day. Uh, you know, it's almost like Christmas all over again. It's that one day where everybody's kind of happy and joyful, and, you know, Easter doesn't even have really the presence involved in it. And so people are even more happy. You know, the race isn't out there to get the, the latest toy or whatever. And it always seemed like, you know, you can have a little piece of this every day. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Every one of you has got drama in your life. Something. And drama that one day you may look back at and go, Man, that was stupid. Why did I even let that bother me? Like I am. I, I can tell you a list. We can tell you and I can list you all kinds of things. But I had all this drama and all this pressure and all this stress over. And now I look back and go, That was kind of dumb. You know, I think about Peter, you know, the, the, they're out on a boat and the storm comes up and all the disciples are scared out of their minds, <clears throat> scared. They're following Jesus Christ, the Son of God that John says created the world and nothing was created without him. They're in this boat and they're scared. <clears throat> One time they were in the boat, the storm comes up, they were scared. He was on the boat with them, and they go to him, and he's sleeping. And he's like, hey, you're just going to let us die? You're going to let us die out here in this boat? You're just going to sleep through it? Another time, it's, he's not with them. And all of a sudden, here he comes walking on the water. You know? And I think that sometimes we get the idea that that was a calming effect. I don't think that was very calming. You know, It says that some of them thought he was a ghost. So, I mean, it just goes from, from, from bad to worse, you know. <laughs> the storm's raging, and all of a sudden, here comes this ghost. Somebody's walking on the water. Peter says, it's, it's Christ, it's Jesus. And so he says, can I come out? Now, this weekend is a senior trip. I think we're going to do some high-flying stuff. High-flying for me, and I'm not real excited about it. I like being on the ground. Uh... But I think I would be the disciples that were still on the boat scared. And I know we give Peter a hard time uh, because he wants to come out on the water and he starts to sink. But where are the other disciples? You know, the other disciples aren't climbing off the boat going, oh, I can't wait to get to Jesus. Let's fight to get there. You know, pushing each other back. They're like, go ahead, Peter. You have fun trying that out. You know, just go ahead and step out there. I think we're okay on the boat, you know. And so many of us are scrambling around trying to save our life. And as Jesus says, we're going to lose it. We lose the whole focus. We lose the whole purpose of the matter. I'm 
know I harp on this and harp on this, but guys, if Jesus isn't the reason behind everything that you do, you're missing out on life. You're missing out on life. Some of you try your best not to have a good time. And I can't say much because I used to be the same way. And I don't know where along the line it clicked, but somewhere along the line somebody put it upside my head and said, hey man, you know, the only reason to be joyful in life is Jesus. And he's a very good reason to be joyful in everything that happens. Now I'm not Mr. Happy Go Lucky all the time. I can't tell you that. But man, it makes a lot of the drama go away when everything clears out and I focus on Christ. And I think that's why the Hebrew writer said what he said, fix your eyes on Christ and all these problems and things will be set aside because he's the example, right? Isn't that what Jesus did? How could a man go to the cross and suffer what he suffered and not be focused on the outcome? You think about it. Because if I'm focused on right now, as soon as the person started mocking me, as soon as they pulled that whip out, old Coach Tracy would have been like, you know what? <laughs> this just ain't worth it. This, this right here, uh-uh, no part of it. This is for somebody else. I didn't even do anything wrong. Listen, he's our example. We set our eyes on him because he set his eyes on the ultimate prize of redeeming you out of the, the depth of hell. He knew what you guys faced. He knew what I faced without him. And he said, my sacrifice is worth it to save you. Now, how, many, how many of you can say that about your friend right now? The person sitting across the table. From you. Are you focused on yourself so much that you don't even worry about them? That you don't even think about what they may be going through? Because there are people in this room right now who are hurting so much. They have doubts. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. They don't know where they might even live tomorrow. We don't know because we're so focused on ourselves, on me. And you have a Savior who didn't do that. Who didn't see the whips and say, you know what, that's enough. Didn't see the, the crown of thorns and say, I'm not wearing that. You're crazy. Didn't see the nails and say, you know what, this has been real and I gave it my best shot, but it's time to hang it up. I'm ready to go back to heaven. Because at some point, we've all done that. At some point, Coach Creasy has seen something going on and said, you know what, it's not worth the sacrifice. They're on their own. And at some point, I've done that to myself. I said, you know what, it's not worth it to go through that. God. And yet Christ saw that and he went on through it. He said, it's worth it to save you and you and you and you and you and all of you. No matter what you've done today, he still sacrificed himself for you. No matter if today I'm focused on Christ, tomorrow I'm not so focused, he died anyways. Just in the hope not the hope we think of, but just in the hope that the Bible calls an earnest expectation that you will make the right decision. It's been proven that most people will strive and meet the expectation, the bar that you give them. Now, sometimes on a Monday, we set the bar real low, and it makes it real easy to, to attain. Well, I didn't say nothing bad to anybody today. I didn't punch anybody today. I didn't try to kill anybody today, and so I did pretty good. But as Christians, every single day, whether it's Monday, whether it's the Passover, whether it's Easter, whether it's Christmas, whether it's just a Monday, Monday, the bar is always higher than we could reach. And there's two reactions to that. Give up, not even try. Or two, be compelled, as Paul was, to live as Christ. Live as Christ to the point that if you die, that's the best alternative. The best alternative is to die and go and be with God.